Hello and welcome to yet another episode of History Time. In recent days, or in recent years, it has been movies from South India that have become pan-Indian hits. You take a look at films such as RRR or Bahubali or recently PS1, all of them made in Tamil Nadu or made in South India and then becoming national hits. But which was the first film that really set this trend? That iconic movie completes 75 years this year and that was Gemini's Chandralekha. Let us see what went into the making of that film. When we talk of Chandralekha, we always talk of Gemini Studios. When we talk of Gemini Studios, can we ever forget those two plump twins with bugles blowing that would always mark the beginning of a Gemini film? And when we look at those Gemini twins, we always remember the proprietor of Gemini Studios, Sri S.S. Vasan. Sri Vasan lost his father very early. His mother actually sold food in railway stations in order to bring up her son. She wanted her son to become an ICS officer and join the government. And so she determined to send him to Madras for higher education. It is said that Vasan cycled all the way to Madras from Tirchi. But having come here, he decided that he did not want to join the government and work for a fixed salary. He wanted to become an entrepreneur. The initial years were full of struggle. Vasan began as an advertising agent. He would get advertisements from various commercial organizations for various Tamil newspapers in the city and he would earn a commission on it. Then he began a mail order catalog business, the equivalent of today's Amazon or Flipkart. People would actually get catalogs with various goods available. They would place their order. Vasan would be responsible for delivering it to them and then they would pay on a value payable post basis. A a system that is no longer in existence today. He then began to write and publish books and sell them at, on his own. Finally, he discovered that there was a magazine called Ananda Vigadan that was failing and he decided to purchase it. He then turned it around and made it a great success. In the 1930s, Kalki Krishnamurti joined him and one of his novels, Tyagabhumi, was serialized in Ananda Vigadan in 1938. At the same time, it was also being made into a film produced and directed by Motion produ Pictures Producers Combined, MPPC, run by K. Subramaniam, the pioneering film director and producer. The MPPC was located at the intersection of Nungambakam High Road and Mount Road. And that was where it was a historic property on which MPPC functioned. Between 1937 and 1939, this studio flourished and then it was completely gutted in a fire accident. Vasan purchased the property in 1940 and began his Gemini studios from there. Everything in Gemini was big. It was run more or less on the style of the studios in the United States of America. Paramount was probably its inspiration. There was a huge number of employees, any number of departments, 600 people whose salaries had to, pay, we had to be paid each month. Vasan believed in running the studio on completely professional lines. Gemini Studios dreamt big. All its films had grandiose sets, big film stars, large scale of production. But perhaps the most challenging of all was Chandralekha. It was announced in 1943 and at that time Vasan just had the name. He did not even know what the story was going to be. He was so impressed by the name that he decided that he would make a film called Chandralekha. In fact, the initial advertisements declare that KLB Vasanta, an actress of that time, would be the heroine. It was only later that T.R. Rajakumari would be cast in the main role. The story evolved over a period of time. And today when you watch it, you realize that there are parts of the Mahabharata, the Ramayana, Homer's Iliad and Odyssey, pieces from Sir Walter Scott, from Alexandra Duma and so many other great works, all of which were melded into one film. And it has remained the formula for most of these fantasy films, even right up to Bahubali and RRR. Two brothers, one good, one evil, both in love with the same girl, an evil king, and then the evil brother chasing out the good brother, the girl going behind the good brother, 
Finally, the public uniting under the leadership of the good brother, defeating the evil brother, crowning the good brother as king, he then marries the girl and end of story. The same story repeated time and again, each time being received by audiences. Vasan's magic was in creating several unique aspects to the film. For instance, you had fight sequences, sword fights, stick fights, you had elephants and horses, you had circus, you had a trapeze act, you had a gypsy dance, and finally the climactic scene, a drum dance that involved hundreds of actors dancing on giant drums. That took several months in production. The drum dance itself, it is said, cost 5 lakhs out of the total budget of around 30 lakhs for the making of the movie. The movie was a cash guzzler. Vasan sunk everything into the production of the film and towards the end did not have money to complete it. His mother produced all the jewels that she had purchased over the years gave it to him and said, sell them or pawn them and use the money for completing your dream. And that is how Chandrilekha eventually was completed. It starred M.K. Radha as the good brother, Ranjan as the evil brother, T.R. Rajakumari as the heroine. You had Sundari Bai in a side role and then N.S. Krishnan, T.A. Madhuram in comedy track and so many other Jiminy staffers in it. The release of the film was preceded by a huge advertising blitz which by itself cost 5 lakhs. Every leading newspaper and periodical in India carried advertisements about the release of Gemini's Chandraleka. Released on April 9th, 1948, which is why the film turned 75 this year, the Tamil version did not really receive a great response. It ran well, but it could not have made the money that Vasan had sunk into the film. But he was not a man who was going to let things lie low. He immediately decided to dub the film in Hindi and release it. With the same stars, all Tamil actors, just the script being written by a Hindi man and the songs in Hindi being dubbed by Uma Devi who would later become the comedian Tuntun. And that is how the film was released in December 1948 all over India and it became a tremendous hit. The Hindi version alone, it is said, brought back 70 lakhs to Vasan for a film that had cost him 35 lakhs. And then there was the Tamil version which also became successful because of the publicity. Not wanting to just keep quiet with this, Vasan released an English version called Chandra and released it all over the world. He then dubbed it and released it in Japanese as well. After the film was released, it was a huge disruptive element in the film world. Suddenly, the North Indian film world woke up to realize that Madras was a centre for making Hindi movies and stars began to come over here. Vasan would hereafter be referred to not as Mr. Vasan or Vasan, but as Vasan Sahab. He was a big man in the world of Bombay. Stars wanted to come here, technicians wanted to come here. They all came here to act in Gemini Studios films. Encouraged by Vasan's lead, other studios of Madras such as AVM and Vijaya Vahini would all turn into major production centres for Hindi cinema. This is not something that I am saying, but A.V. Meyapachetyar himself has written about Vasan's role in transforming Madras city into a production centre for Hindi film. Jiminy would have a glorious run. It would make several films, some of which were great successes, some of which were flops, as it happens in the film world. Vasan himself passed away in 1969. At that time, there was a major turning point, the world of Tamil cinema. The question was, did we need studios at all? Most films were now being shot on location. Gemini continued till 1975-76 and eventually closed. It was a big shock to the world of cinema. Who would have believed that Gemini studios would close? The land was partitioned and auctioned off and many new buildings came up on the premises. Today, the name is just a memory. But what is interesting is that it has lingered all along. The Anna flyover, which came up at the intersection by the side of which Gemini Studios once stood, is mostly referred to as Gemini flyover. Isn't it interesting that when the heroine T.R. Rajakumari, whose centenary was last year, is more or less forgotten, Chandralekha is still remembered and Vasan is remembered and above all the name Gemini still continues to exist. That is the magic of cinema. Why did Chandralekha succeed? What was the reason for it? Apart from all that Vasan brought into the film, 
there was yet another reason. This was the time of partition, a newly independent country with several difficulties that the public was going through. They just wanted to be in a theatre for three hours, go into a world of fantasy and forget all their worries. There were several positive aspects to the film as well. People realised that good triumphs over evil and they believed in it. And that was probably one of the reasons for the success of Chandraleka. Whatever it was, it remains an iconic film, never to be forgotten. I will soon be back with you with other such stories from our history. Bye for now. Thank you.